Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. Today we're going to have a bit of a discussion. Uh, I, I talk a lot about on this channel about what makes a knife fun, what makes it cool. Uh, we're going to focus more on the cool, I guess, than the fun, although they both kind of go hand in hand. Uh, it's not necessarily what you think. Like, you're going to notice in this video, I'm going to show you a whole lot of knives that I think are cool and fun, and I think a lot of other people think are cool and fun. But uh, I'm not going to be showing you a lot of customs, a lot of really hugely expensive stuff, because, you know, we all know that stuff's cool. We all know, you know, a nice Koenig area is super cool. We know a uh, Gareth Bull Chamois super cool. Like, we know that. A uh, Philippe Georges, super cool. We all know that. But they're very expensive and, and not obtainable to everybody. And what's cool about Knife Guys, and this is something that was kind of inspired by hanging out with guys at Blade Show. They had hugely expensive customs. But I was bringing out my plebeium, you know, nice uh, production knives, and they still thought they were cool. It's it, they can be cool without being horribly expensive, and without being, you know, just just ridiculously over the top. It's there's so many ways of cool for a knife. Uh, I I'm gonna do what is it? Seven different things here. Seven different ways I think a knife can be cool. But uh, there's a lot more than that. It's just and comment down below. This is meant to be a discussion. What do you guys think makes a knife cool? But it's just, they're knives, no matter what price bracket you're in, you pull it out in front of a bunch of knife guys, and they think it's cool. So we're going to talk about that. I think the first factor we all think about when we think of something cool or fun is the action and fidgetability. I think that's what everybody loves. Everybody likes to flick their knives open and play around with them. And there are so many knives that are so much fun to play with. I'm just bringing out a few here that I have that are in my collection that I, I put in that. Uh... This is the Protec Mass Drop Ferrum Forge collaboration three-way thing. Uh, the Mordax button lock, super smooth. So much fun to play with. It's just ungodly smooth and just a blast to play with. And one of my favorite knives just to sit and fidget with. Uh, this is, you know, it's a drop knife. It, it, you get it when you can get it. It's not super obtainable, but there's a lot of stuff here that is very obtainable, such as, you know, just almost any Benchmade access lock. They're still so much fun to play with. This is the uh, Super Freak. Um, yeah, the, there's a lot of them that are a lot of fun. Uh, this is another one. It's a little bit hard to get your hands on, the Boost Blade Smoke. I could have put this in another category also that we'll get to here in a bit. Um, I may bring it out again for that. But uh, the Boost Blade Smoke, also just super cool, fun to play with, super fun to fidget with. Not horribly expensive, uh, 220 but, you know, good luck getting your hands on one. Um Something like front flippers are super popular, and I just showed you one, another one, one of my favorites, 60 bucks, easy to get your hand on, not this version necessarily, although they're still in stock right now at indianaknives.com, but uh, the Real Steel Metamorph, it, a lot of fun to play with, the uh, Civivi McKenna, a lot of fun to fiddle with, it's just something that's just fun to fidget and play with. Any knife guy is going to appreciate that. Doesn't matter how much it costs. Doesn't matter where you got it from. Doesn't matter who makes it. If if you flip it out and you're just playing with it and it's fun to fiddle with, other knife guys are going to think it's cool. Next up, one of my favorite categories that makes knives favorite to me is just pure silliness. I like when a knife is just stupid. I like it when a knife is just huge or an overbuilt or maybe just... Um, very swoopy and crazy looking, but still somewhat functional. Uh, I don't have anything in that later category, but as far as the, the big and silliness goes, um, this is actually a horribly useful knife also, but I don't need a four inch blade knife. I don't need a, this is the Spyderco Native Chief. I don't need this. I have no need to have it, but I like it and it's cool. And everybody's going to think it's cool because it's big and it's stabby and it's just cool. Uh, same thing could be said for the... Cold Steel 8010. I don't need a knife this big. Uh, again, I don't need a knife that, that that's this overbuilt. I'm not, you know, I'm not fighting anybody, not doing anything like that. But it's a, it's a, just a great knife, and it's, it's just cool. And you pull out something that big and that bulky, people always think it's kind of cool. And the, I think the ultimate stupid knife that I own, I just did a review on this where I called it uh, what, useful stupidity. Yeah. This is the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. I don't need this. Nobody needs this, but it's awesome. It's just awesome because nobody needs it. And I think that's, uh, I think it's great that they still make stuff like that. I think it's really cool. Uh, next up, I think an obvious one 
and I kind of alluded to it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the stupidity quite often. It's just style, you know, something that you have just because it looks good. Um, it's still, it still hopefully will be a functional tool, but sometimes you do have knives just because they look good. This, this would go especially if you're talking about customs and stuff like that. But the two knives that I have right now that I, I think kind of epitomize that, you have your Best Tech Malware and your uh, Benchmade Anthem. Uh, both useful tools, both very useful knives, but both just style. You know, they're just meant to look, you know, you got the, the, the wavy handles on this, the, the whole, especially the malware. It's just meant to look cool. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is awesome. It's They look cool. They make you want to carry them more just because they look cool. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think style is a huge, important thing in knives that I think some guys try and act like they're too cool for it. Be like, oh, they, they didn't need to do that with this. You know, they, they could have just made this the malware simpler. Yeah, they could have, but it's cool and it's not horribly expensive. Uh, the Anthem's a bit pricey, but, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Fine. It's it's what what is wrong with doing something just for style's sake? I don't see a problem with it at all. I think that's one of the biggest things that just makes a knife cool is just style. Um, but on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, of, of especially amongst knife guys, what can make a knife cool is just that it's it's uh, it's just useful, just usefulness. If you pull out a knife that we all know is really good, um, we we all think you're cool, no matter what it costs. I think one of the best examples of this is. If you're around a bunch of other guys and some guy pulls out one of these, just a simple Ontario Rat Model 1 in D2 steel, or even if it's the Aus 8 version, you know that's a knife guy. You know he knows because it's not like you're picking these up at Dick's Sporting Goods or something. These are, they're not hard to find, but you went on the internet to go find it, you know? And if you chose this knife, you know. It just kind of, some of these simple, just very useful knives, if a guy pulls that out, you know he knows. He knew what he was doing when he bought it. He knew he was buying just a useful tool. And there's definitely an element of coolness to that. Uh, other knives like that. You're looking at something like uh, one of my favorites, the uh, Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. Like, yeah, that guy just is getting some work done. He knows what he's doing. You have your uh, Benchmade Bug Out. It's another one that's a very popular one now. Like, that's a that's a knife guy's knife. Um, something even simple, like a really nice Swiss Army knife, the nicest one that I have. So that's the one I'm going to pull out. This is a 2018, you know, limited edition cadet. Like that, that's just a useful, cool knife. And knife guys are going to know that. And they're going to really, really like that. Uh, I think another one too, that's become kind of, uh, it's a bit harder to get, but, uh, the, uh, mass drop keen, Ray Laconico design or drop keen, whatever it is now, uh, it, just a super useful, cool knife. You can really, really impress people like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything super fancy or crazy. Uh, though the last one, I had this one sitting here too. I just had this one out. I wasn't planning on putting it in, but like a Cold Steel Code 4. Somebody pulls my pulls out a Cold Steel Code 4 next to me. I know that guy knows his knives. Because, again, it's not something you're going to find in every department store or anything like that. But knife guys know this is a great freaking knife. Uh, one of my favorite EDCs of all time. And it's you just know when guys pull it out, like, ah, yeah, that guy knows what he's doing. I can, I can talk to this guy. Uh, I can, I can have a conversation. We're going to be friends. Probably not. Cause they're probably tougher than me. Cause I'm not really a hardworking kind of guy, but, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, next up, I'm just kind of rambling as I'm putting knives on. I did pull out more. I got a lot of them here. Uh, next one is a uh, uniqueness. Uh, and I don't mean just, um, that is hard to find. I think that's another category we'll get to, but just something unique and different that not everyone sees every day. Uh, for me, it's knives like, uh, uh, it could just be just a unique lock system. Maybe this is a knife that is like a regular production knife, but it's a lock system you don't see very often. Uh, for example, one that just came out, the Steel Will Tasso. Uh, this is, I think, going to be fairly widely available shortly. Uh, they said they were going to sell it on the site, but now I know it's on Blade HQ. Somebody told me. But uh, with the Ant Lock, it's a new, unique lock system. That's cool. Just a new, unique lock system. That's You pull this out in front of uh, knife guys that have never never seen one before, they're going to want to play with it. 
and they should because it's a very fun little knife it's fun kind of big knife actually uh, another one in that same kind of category is uh you know buck marksman not an uncommon knife this particular one is this is the gray ghost from uh, sks blades but um s or something like that ss blades sks blades I, i'm sorry if i'm messing that up search buck marksman gray ghost you'll find it immediately um but any buck marksman it's just it's a unique lock system again they have that strap lock on the back from uh the, the hawk brothers or father and son uh g and g hawk yeah the g and g hawk collaboration it's it's a fun knife and this could also go in the fidgetability thing too. This is this is cool in multiple ways. A lot of these knives I'm going to show could qualify in multiple ways, but this one I'm putting in for the uniqueness because it is a very unique lock. And and some kind of sometimes it is kind of fun to hand somebody a knife with a unique lock system that they're just like I don't know how to work this and hand it back to you and you have to show them how to do it. it I, I take some pleasure in that sometimes. It's a bit of smugness, you know. It's a bit of lighthearted, harmless smugness in a day just be like oh you don't know how to operate my knife let me show you um another category is just just stuff that's kind of unique i haven't done the review on this yet well i have but you haven't seen it yet um this is a snw metalworks go-to it's just a simple slip joint at appearance but it's got this unique spring on the back uh you know integrated spring into the blade and it's just you don't see them every day and it's neat just to have something that not everybody sees every day kind of cool and you can you don't have to spend a lot of money on stuff like this though this is 50 bucks even cheaper i've talked before i like peasant knives when i travel i always buy some find out what that country is you know what that country's kind of peasant knife sort of is and things like this like this is a uh martins this is actually one of the more expensive ones i think this was almost 30 whole dollars uh but yeah it's from portugal just cool little you know wooden very simple sort of open l-esque in its action and everything uh just a very neat little knife uh that no one's ever gonna see anywhere else when you're traveling i highly recommend that it's a very fun hobby if you just want to have unique stuff for cheap every country in europe and almost all over the world has something like this some little knife this is even more this was four euros so 550 uh i bought it in, in lisbon obviously in the alfalma district but it's again it's a martins but it's a little it's just a little uh, sardine knife. It's got a little fork on it. It's got a little can opener. It's just, it's meant from the, way back from the 1800s when fishermen used to sit there and open their sardine tins and stuff. It's just, it's just super cool. It Nobody's going to see one like it. And it's just neat. Now, yeah, you know, it was like five fifty, six bucks, something like that. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Just something unique that no one's ever seen before. And it impresses people. Now, granted, a lot of people haven't seen M Techs before, and those are not cool. But you get what you get. What I'm putting, you, you're picking up what I'm putting down. I think. Uh, and then uh, next up, I'm going to say uh, knives with some cachet, knives that are not necessarily horribly expensive. Again, it's like I said, I'm not talking about customs or over the top stuff, but just knives that are kind of hard to get. Uh, maybe uh, like for like sprints. Like this is a uh, Knife Center exclusive PM2. It's one of the only uh, sprint runs or exclusives that I have. I don't usually wind up keeping them. <laughs> usually somebody offers me ridiculous money and I sell them, but this one is never for sale. The PM2 Crew Wear Smooth G10. It's just a PM2, but it's one that the average person can't get. Uh, so when you show it to friends and stuff, you know, that know what you what it is, they think it's cool. Um, other stuff, you know, and again, just stuff that's hard to get. This is just some of the recent ones. We have the TRM Atom, you know, takes a while to get one uh they're starting a waiting list you have the north arm skaha too takes like a year and a half to get one of those they're actually closing the books on them till the end of the year so god knows how long it's before you can get one of those something i picked up at blade show the chavez ultramar 229 i don't know what the availability is going to be on it when it's actually out but you know i got this at blade show it's not out yet so it's kind of cool to we could get them at blade show they sold like 100 of them but everybody else has to wait a bit it's just kind of cool just to know you got something in your pocket that's hard to get that you made an effort to get it makes it feel more special and cool to you that it's just you you made an effort you had to try to get it it's not something you just impulse bought you know off of your favorite knife retailer it's it's something that you had to make an effort you had to set an alarm you know to get on a waiting list or you had to go to blade show and stand in line something like that it, it just makes the knife cool to you the last thing i'm gonna say and this is a uh, 
I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out a, a better way to word this, but if you feel like you stole it, and I'm, by this, I mean like knives that are just great and way underpriced. And you kind of feel like only me and my knife buddies know that this knife should cost so much more. Uh, the examples that I'm going to bring out are the uh, Honey Badger. This is the uh, original 8CR 13MOV version. There's a D2 version now also. That one's, this one is not, that one's not quite as much of a bargain as this. Uh, this is like, you know, they're like 30 bucks. And now these are popping up on regular retailers. I know Smoky Mountain Knife Works sells them. Um, another one I like a lot, the American Buffalo Knife and Tool Grunt. I'm going to have a review of this up soon. I've already recorded it. It's, it's just a fun knife. It's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Action on it is ridiculous. For 20 bucks, it's just a lot of fun. And then another one of the ones I recognize, I recommend the most, I think probably of any knives, people who just don't know nothing about knives and don't know what to get, I recommend these a lot. And K-Bar Dozier, again, 20, 25 bucks. They are fantastic. Simple back lock, any idiot can use it. The action on them is not horrible at all. Blade's not horrible at all. Lockups very solid, just cool knives. And it, there is a bit of a an ego trip thing of just knowing that, like, I know this is good. They didn't charge me enough for it. It's just, you know, you just feel like you got away with something. And I think these three knives exemplify that in my collection better than anything. And that's kind of it. it. There are more things. Again, this is meant to be a discussion. Comment down below what you think makes a knife cool, what doesn't make it cool. Um, it's Again, this is not, we're not talking about quality, value, anything like that. Just cool and fun factor. And that, that's all we're talking about. So comment down below what you think. These are just some that I pulled out just to try and do this. Um, honestly, I might have pulled out a few more, but this video has been ridiculously long and I don't have enough room on my desk for all these knives as it is. So <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, just wanted to start a discussion. And please, in the comments down below, keep it going. I'll try and pay attention. I've been Brian. Have a good one.